This video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, so if you're looking to pick up your first drone from DJI and you wanna know what the absolute cheapest options are, you've got two to pick from. The first option is the DJI Mini 4K, which came out in the beginning of 2024 and is more or less a refreshed version of the Mini 2 that came out in 2020. Don't let that date alarm you though, because we aren't dealing with old technology here. As an entry-level option, you're going to be very surprised at how well this drone performs for its size and price. The other option on the table here is the DJI Neo, which is a newer release within the past month or two, but just by the look of it, you might be able to tell that this is a much different drone than the Mini 4K. It provides a much different experience that I would say resembles a tiny whoop. Okay, so let's start here. Something that you need to know about DJI's drones is that they all fly very similar across the board. I know it's hard to imagine that the Inspire 3, DJI's cinema grade drone, flies just like the Mavic 3 Pro, DJI's flagship folding drone, which also flies just like the Mini 4K, which is their least expensive GPS drone that we're discussing in this video, but it's the truth. These five things, I have listed on the screen is DJI's secret sauce to give you a similar experience across the board no matter which drone you fly. The first of which is GPS hold, so when you put the drone up and out into space, it's going to hold its position thanks to the GPS connection and onboard sensor. So even if a strong breeze comes by, the drone will change its pitch angle to make sure it stays in the same position. You could put the controller down and it'll hover there in place. With all of DJI's drones, we also have fluid controls, so up is up, down is down, left is left, and right is right. DJI's remote control are really great to fly with. They're nice, high quality. They have really great sticks on them and the flight control software on their drones is great, providing for an awesome flight experience. Now we also have a three axis mechanical gimbal on most of DJI's GPS drones. So this allows you to have a nice stable view of the camera as it's flying. It doesn't matter if there's a gust of wind moving it around. It doesn't matter if you're flying forwards, backwards, left or right. That gimbal is going to stable itself out to give you a nice smooth video and a nice flight experience. Now we also have a really strong image transmission across the board on all DJI drones. The technology kind of varies from drone to drone as it's been improved over the years, but just know that really no matter which DJI drone you buy, you're going to have a great signal from the drone to the controller, overall giving you a great flight experience. And now, Finally, we have return to home, which is great to have because if you have any sort of issue or error with the drone, it knows exactly where it took off. It knows where it is in space and it'll come back and land right where you took off from. So really, if you've flown one DJI drone, you've kind of flown them all. Now with that said, things have shaken up a bit as DJI has leaned into their new line of drones that can fly in full manual or acro. The secret sauce is still here, like this line of drones still has the GPS hold, fluid controls, a solid transmission system, and return home, but they're geared more towards being flown with a pair of FPV goggles, so there's no three-axis gimbal. These drones, the Neo, Avada, and FPV drone, just have a one-axis mechanical gimbal with electronic image stabilization to help smooth out the rest of the shot. This and the general design of the drone, believe it or not, makes it very different from the GPS line of drones. So with that brief crash course, hopefully you can understand why these drones differ on a base level. The Mini 4K is at the bottom of the totem pole on the GPS side of drones, while the Neo is at the bottom of the ladder on the FPV drone side. It's crazy that even though these drones are similarly sized, the design, the shape, the performance, and the camera really do give you a different experience between both of them. Okay, so now let's go through what makes these drones different so that you can make your choice on which is better for you. But before you do that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is my all-in-one tool to share and manage my content. The layout that I've chosen gives me the ability to share my videos, photos, and general information with my audience on my own terms, so I get to choose how it's displayed. I was able to fully customize the experience of my website quickly and efficiently thanks to their many templates that got me started. All the elements that Squarespace offers gives me many different options to feature the images and content on my web pages. This also makes my website easy to maintain over time so I can spend less time updating my website and more time creating. You can get a jumpstart on your own website using design intelligence that leverages AI for a faster design. This allows you to build a personalized website that fits you or your business's needs. Aside from being a digital portfolio for my work, Squarespace has also become my main way of operating my business on the daily. From accepting payments from clients, sending invoices, and being able to operate my own digital store, I couldn't imagine doing business without it. To keep on top of how my website is performing, Squarespace's analytics go in-depth so that I can see how much traffic my website is getting, what area my website is being viewed the most, and I can see which web pages and which content is performing the best. So a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and helping me display my work online for over half a decade. Thank you. 
So with these being DJI's entry-level drones, price point is on the lower side, and with any sales you might be able to find, or as new drones release, these prices could fluctuate. For example, the Mini 4K is $299, but is currently discounted down to $239 at the time of making this video. The Fly More combo with the carrying bag, extra batteries, and other accessories is also discounted down from the original $449 price. You might compare this with the Neo and say, wow, the Neo is way less expensive, but just know that the base version doesn't come with a remote controller. There's actually a ton of different accessories for the Neo because of all the different ways to fly it. So I'll leave all the pricing up here on the screen so that you can kit out what a full setup would be for your preference. Just to kind of run you through some examples, if you wanted to get the drone, a remote controller, and a set of goggles, you'd be looking at about $629 and you would still need to add batteries onto that. If you instead wanted a comparable experience to the Mini 4K and just wanted to get a similar remote controller, the RCN3, you'd actually be looking at a similar price point. But the real fun with the Neo is when you get the goggles and fly FPV. We'll touch more on this soon. So price-wise, it's hard to tell exactly who's the winner here. Even though the Neo is less expensive in its base version, you don't get a remote controller. Now, the Mini 4K does have an overall lower price point when you start to factor in the cost of the goggles, the FPV controller, extra batteries, the Neo, but I think it's unfair to say that the Neo is unreasonably priced because you're getting more for what you pay for. You're getting a set of goggles. You're getting a completely different flight experience. <laughs> Now the flight modes available on both of these drones is where things really start to differ as both of them offer completely different experiences. The Mini 4K is a traditional GPS drone in a sense that it takes super smooth video and sharp photos. Remember the fundamentals of these DJI drones. They all do the same thing at their core, but the technology, aircraft performance, and camera quality get better as you spend more money on their higher end drones. So this style of drone is what really popularized drones as it made them easy to fly. It was a lot of fun to zip around, but most importantly, the photos and videos that you capture were what drove the interest and overall usability of these drones. They became wildly popular amongst photographers and videographers like myself, they became fun for hobbyists to bring on vacation, and they became irreplaceable for law enforcement. It really turned out to be a great type of drone that appealed to the masses. Let's flip over to the Neo now, which is going to be hard to shrink down into such a short segment because of all the different ways that you can fly this drone. I actually made a video specifically about the versatility of this drone and all the ways that you can fly it, which are listed up here on the screen. It's pretty impressive that a drone of this size has so many different ways that you can fly it, and if you want more information about these flight modes, I'd recommend you check out the other video I made, which I'll leave linked in the top corner and down in the description, but I'll do a quick overview for this video so that we can check all the boxes and you know how the Neo works. So basically, there's three different ways that you can fly the Neo. You can have it autonomously track you and perform other autonomous moves. You can actually fly it just like you would a GPS drone with a regular controller that has a built-in screen or uses your phone as a screen, so that would be the RCN2, RCN3, or the RC2 controller, or you can fly it like an FPV drone with goggles on your face, and you can use the motion controller or the FPV remote. This really does make the Neo one of the most versatile drones I've ever used because of how many different ways you can fly it. Having the tracking features is going to be great for people that don't want to actually fly the drone, but want it to follow them while they're doing some sort of medium-paced activity, whether they're on their, say, one-wheel, electric rideable, or maybe they're on their bike. It's also great that you can fly it like a normal GPS drone, so for somebody that doesn't have the skill to fly in full manual or full acro, they're able to still have fun with the drone, fly it around, take some videos and some photos of their friends, family, and the area that they're in. But for people that want the most out of this drone, they can fly in full manual. They can throw the goggles on. They can get that first person immersive view. I mean, really, I don't know of a drone right now that's available that can tackle all three different types of flight in one single package. I feel like with that short segment right there, I probably persuaded a lot of people to purchase the Neo over the Mini 4K for the versatility alone. I mean, think about all the ways you can fly the drone. If you get bored of it, tracking you autonomously while you're on your bike, throw the goggles on and fly it in full manual. You can use the FPV controller or the motion controller. You can also purchase just the regular remote and fly in the standard GPS modes, the normal and sport mode, so that you can take photos while you're on vacation. I mean, the Neo is such a jack of all trades drone, but there are people out there that want the best traditional drone experience possible with the three axis gimbal to give them stable video and high quality images. And that's why the Mini 4K excels in that regard. So what I would say is if you want a tracking FPV drone, buy the Neo. If you want a drone that you can take high quality photos and videos with, buy the Mini 4K. And now for the final differentiating factor, 
the camera. I'm gonna carousel through some photos and some video clips while I share my thoughts on both of the cameras on these drones. So first and foremost, the type of video captured from both of these drones is wildly different. The Mini 4K gives you smooth cinematic video, while the Neo has a wider angle camera that is better for video closer to the ground and tracking subjects. You can take the Mini 4K out and get some awesome shots of a landscape if you're on a hike, or a cityscape with all the buildings while the Neo just isn't built for this type of flying. The camera is too wide for those shots to look pleasing, and what I find pretty crazy is that the video from the Neo is flat out not as good as the Mini 4K. These cameras have very similar specs, but the video that comes from the Mini 4K is so much more clear and sharp. The Neo, on the other hand, isn't as stable, and the video lacks a general sharpness that makes the footage from the drone look very soft and grainy. The low quality video from this drone kind of makes it feel like exactly what it is, an entry level drone. I feel like DJI needed to sacrifice somewhere for the Neo to be at the price that it is, and while every other aspect of it punches above its weight class, making for a really fun drone, the camera is left lacking. Now, I really don't use the Neo for photos all that much, unless it's just for ground level shots of people, which is kind of what this drone was intended for. It's labeled as a vlog drone by DJI. The Mini 4K, on the other hand, has a camera that I think over exceeds the price point of the drone. I would have no problem posting photos from this drone on social media because the quality is right there where I'd want it to be. Sure, I could start nitpicking about things like dynamic range, the bitrate of the video, the megapixel count of the camera, or the frame rate options, but for how inexpensive this drone is, I'm really happy about the photo and videos I get with it. If you want to check out some sample photos and videos between these two drones, I'll leave a link in the description so you can download them for yourself and check them out. Okay, so hopefully I laid everything out for you so you can make the decision on which drone is going to be best for you. I don't think I can necessarily say that one drone is better than the other because they are two very different and separate options. One is a GPS photo video drone. The other is like a vlog tracking FPV drone. If I had to choose one, I could only use one of these drones for the rest of my life, I would go with the Mini 4K because I'm a photographer and videographer before I'm a drone pilot, before I'm somebody that likes to fly drones. I fly drones because I like the photos and videos that come from the camera, and the camera on the Mini 4K is far superior than the Neo. Now, if you're somebody that just wants to have fun with your drone and you want to have all these different experiences, the Neo is going to be the way to go. You've got tracking. You've got the ability to fly it like a GPS drone. You've got the FPV aspect of it with the the goggles. You can fly with the motion controller. There is so much fun to be had with this drone that you just can't have on the Mini 4K because it's such a narrow lane. It's just one controller. It's just photo and video. But for some people, that's what they want. So hopefully that helped you guys choose which one is best for you. Let me know your thoughts on both these drones in the comments down below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.